Okay, in this video we're checking out the Toolkit RC M8 charger. Uh, there's actually this other one here from Hobbymate called the D6 Elite Charger here on the left of the orange dial. You can see they pretty much look identical. And in fact, I'm pretty sure that they are. I didn't notice a couple minor differences other than the color. On the back here, the input is 10 to 30 volts on the uh, Toolkit RC one and 7 to 30 volts on this one here. But I have a feeling that they're going to be the same. So I'll just turn this one on here. I think the firmware version is a little different this one here. So 117 says Hobbymate. You have these functions for your charger, measure or output settings. And then on this one, it's 115 Toolkit RC, and it's got all the same functions. As far as I can tell, there's really no difference. And also, the price is the same as well. They're for $40. So, um, yeah, uh, I'll put all the links in the description. Uh, the people, these vendors are said they'll send me a charger, and it turns out they're the same. So, the Hobby one you can get from Hobby Cool or Amazon. Uh, there's links for those. And then the Toolkit RC one you can get from Hobby Porter, Banggood, uh, Race Day Quads. I think this one is all the main one or the one that's being OEM'd. So we'll just take a look at this one and I'm just going to assume that this one is all the same. But all the links to all the various places you get this are going to be in the description. So you can pick the store that uh, you feel like you want to get it at. But uh, yeah, um, in terms of this being a smart charger and all, kind of similar to the ISDT Q6 plus 300 watts 14 amp charger here. I've had this forever. Very good charger. Very reliable. No problems with this one. This one only does uh, 1 to 6 or 2 to 6s I think. Actually 1 to 6s and this one does uh, 1 to 8s. So even though it says here 2 to 8s and also here I'm sure we should also say 2 to 6s. I've charged up 1s packs on this so yeah, you can do 1S. I'm pretty sure this one will do that as well. So input over here, output over here, and then so basically just do the same old deal. You plug in your main main lead here, and then the balance lead over here, and then the negative is going to be on the side positive over here. But yeah, this one does up to 8S, so uh, I haven't ever seen an 8S battery yet, so it's kind of interesting that we just started uh, getting 6S LiPos, and now uh, 8S is going to be coming out of these chargers, so I guess it's kind of needed since uh, people are, uh, are probably going to go 8S at some point. But yeah, here it says here on the front here, 1 to 8S. Anyway, just uh, we'll go over the interface real quick. Uh, obviously here, kind of retro, old school, kind of 80 style video game interface here. But um, yeah, if you can, you know, obviously the one in the ISTT is much prettier, colors and all that, but you know, if you're discharging batteries, you really need that. And I think that's probably one of the areas that they're cutting the cost because this one, the ISTT is about 60 bucks here, and this one is about 40. So, but you're going to get uh, some of the, uh, well, pretty much all the same features, plus some additional features here, like the measurer and the output. We'll go over that real quick. Uh, but let's do the charger function first. This is pretty basic. You have, uh, I think, five, one, two, three, yeah, five different programs you can set up. Obviously, the one that they've got in here already is this, this LiPo. You can go in here, just press the dial, and then there's charge, discharge, storage charge. You know, they set the amp rate for charge and discharge, and then also the voltage, the ending voltage. That's a pretty basic, you know, plug in the battery, and then you can initiate your program that way. So, go over here to the next function, measurer, and you have the little dial, and then you have to press. So this is what's kind of interesting with this charger is that this is uh, basically a PWM port here, signal plus N minus over here. You can put a servo lead in here and you can measure uh, signals, either PWM signal, PPM signal, S bus signal, and then there's also battery and ESC. But these are the three that you can measure through this port over here. And you, you can measure whatever is, signal is coming out. So for example, if you want to See if your free sky SBUS receiver is working properly or not. You can plug a you know solder on a servo lead to your receiver, plug that in here, and then measure it, and then you'll get your outputs on here. So if you're um, you know if you have a bound to your receiver or receiver to your transmitter, you can then move your sticks around and see the various levels change here. Just uh, that's one of the functions you can use to check if your receiver is working right, or you can check any source that's going to pr produce these sort of signals and. Plug it in here and then see if it's actually working. 
Okay, so under here, under battery, you can measure the voltage and, whoops, you can measure the voltage, internal resistance. So those are the two things you can measure. So let's go ahead and plug in a battery here. And we plug in the battery and then uh, we can see the individual uh, cell voltages. So you see it's a little bit out of balance. So we can and then go in here and change this to internal resistance. And then go down and hit test. And then I'll actually start measuring the internal resistance of the battery. And then give you some numbers here, the internal resistance of each cell. Of course, you know, uh, this is it all depends on how this is calibrated, so you can't take these numbers and compare them to another charger unless it's from the same company and calibrated the same way. So the numbers you're going to get on the internal resistance numbers from an ISDT are going to be different from this. It's going to be different from uh, another branded charger, depending upon how it's calibrated, even on the same battery. So just keep that in mind. And then another thing we can do is go over here to mode to voltage. And since these are a little bit out of balance, you can hit the balance function and it'll, it'll actually go and try and balance all the cells out. You can see that cell 2 is a bit lower than the rest of them, so it's going to probably try and bring that cell up. Okay, so that's probably going to take a little while, so we'll just go ahead and skip that for now. And then this last one here, ESC, it says you can measure the current of an EC maximum to 15 amps. I'm um, assuming that if maybe you're doing some sort of ESD, ESC, like maybe, uh, testing on a thrust stand, for example, it will measure the current uh, if you have the power coming through. So I'm not exactly sure how that would work, and I hadn't seen any examples of that anywhere, but it's saying that it, that's, that's one way you could do that. You could probably, it's probably going to be through the port over here, and it's going to be measuring the current, but don't take my word for that. I haven't tested that. But yeah, it's another function that you have on here available to you. Okay, so the next function here is output. And the same deal here. You can output a signal out of this port over here on the side through a servo connector, PWM, PPM, SBUS. So those are the three. And then power is you can actually um, turn this into a power supply. So it's normally, it's normally the power comes in from here and then it charges up the battery. But if you just want to output DC power out of here at a certain voltage, you can do that and power, you know, say, um, you know, say, say a receiver or something. Basically, just go in. And actually, I'm not going to, you know, I think if you have the battery in here, it's probably not going to work if you get an error. But let's go ahead and, oops. It's okay, here we say, so there's custom. Well, so this, this dial is a little kind of hard to use. Not really, li yeah, I'm not liking this dial too much. Okay, so, custom Mavic 2, so there's some programs in here. And basically this, the programs for basically the voltage and the number of amps. So here you can set a certain voltage and a certain number of amps, and then that will get output out of this port over here. Obviously if you don't if you have something else other than XD60 you need some sort of an adapter, then it'll give you some measurements here on watts and amps as it's uh, sending power out. So you can use this as a sort of a pseudo DC power supply for certain certain uh, uh, needs if you have haven't have those certain requirements. Okay so last thing here under settings you can change your lowest input voltage so you don't over drain your battery that the power is coming in. Obviously, if you're using a power supply or something, this this probably doesn't matter. But you know, if you uh, this is probably such a three cell volt uh, battery, so if you don't you don't want to set this too low and then over discharge your and battery and then and actually destroy your battery. So you want to set this to a proper voltage for whatever battery is is being used to charge up your other batteries. You can set your input power here, temperature settings, and then here under discharge mode, there's uh, there's internal and recycle. What this will do is it'll actually, uh, when you when you do a, a discharge, it'll discharge the battery that's on here, it's normally charging, and send the power out back into the input battery. So instead of it being discharged into like a bank of resistors and just uh, dissipating it as heat, which takes longer, you'll actually send the power back out and recharge your input battery 
if you use the recycle method to discharge. Anyway, I think that's going to cover all the features of this charger. Um, fairly similar to the ISD char ISDT chargers. I've got a few extra features in here. Uh, sort of a dumbed down interface, um, you know, retro style here, but that's probably worth saving some money. Not a huge fan of the dial here, but I think it's something I could probably get used to. So, you know, uh, overall probably not that huge of a big deal, but it's $40 and I, most of the ISDT chargers are running 60 to over $100 on most of those. So if this, uh, uh, you know, this sort of charger here meets most of your needs, it gets $40, it's pretty reasonable. Um, obviously lots of different places you can get this at, as I mentioned earlier in the video, so links to all those will be down in the description if you want to check it out. Yeah, if you guys have any questions, let me know, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.